Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing the rise of Samayi Let's Talk Lore series with episode 3, titled A Pillar of Court. Now last episode, we discussed how Samayi reluctantly joined Cao Cao's court, but after serving for 12 years, Samayi found his calling as a close ally to the then crown prince, Cao Pi. And in the last year of Cao Cao's life, one major event that dominated the tension of the entire Wei court would be none other than Guan Yu's campaign in the Jin province. For Sima Yi, who prior to Guan Yu's attack, had already warned Cao Cao that the current prefect of the Jin province in Shi Hu and the administrator of Nan in Fufang were both bad choices for such important posts as Shi Hu was overly cruel and Fufang was overly prideful. And Guan Yu's attack would once again help prove his astuteness as both Shi Hu and Fu Fang would surrender to Guan Yu after Guan Yu flooded and captured Yu Jin's reinforcements outside Fan Castle. And for a time, it appeared that Guan Yu would eventually take the twin city of Fan and Xiangyang, which were the last defensive positions west of Xucheng, where the Han Emperor Liu Xie still resided in. Therefore, Cao Cao started to seriously consider moving the emperor north as losing the emperor to Liu Bei would be unthinkable. However, at this critical moment, official Sima Yi and Jiang Ji spoke up against moving the emperor, as they both felt that moving the emperor would be seen as a sign of weakness and might lead to more defections along the borders with Shu Han and Wu. Instead, they argue that as Guan Yu's success in the Jin province grows, it would surely unnerve Sun Quan to the point of breaking his already uneasy alliance with Liu Bei. Therefore, the best plan would be to reach out to Sun Quan directly and goad him into betraying Guan Yu. Cao Cao took this advice, and the rest was history as Sun Quan would command Lu Meng to backstab and eventually capture and kill Guan Yu. Now, since we covered this event in multiple series in the past, so for the purpose of this series, we're going to focus only on Sima Yi's involvement in the aftermath of Guan Yu's final campaign. Even though Sun Quan's forces would eliminate Guan Yu, Guan Yu's attack on the Jin province still caused most of the civilians living on the Tun Tian farms here to abandon their farms as they fled to take refuge from the war. And because of this, Cao Cao was now considering a forced migration of the Jin province population as he wanted to create a barren no man's land buffer zone similar to what he had on the eastern front around Hefei as these vacant areas were designed to prevent advancing armies from having any farms to loot and pillage from during their campaigns. While this was one valid strategy, Sima Yi argued against the plan, as he felt that the population was an even more valuable resource than food, and if Cao Cao issued the edict of forced migration right now, the local Jin province citizens who were still in hiding in the countryside might decide to flee south to Sun Quan, as most people wanted to stay near their ancestral homeland. Hearing this, Cao Cao decided against forced migration, and sure enough, once peace returned to the Jin province, those who were in refuge came back to their Tuantian farms, continued to live under the Wei regime, and produced for the Wei military engine. But Sima Yi's greatest act during this period is probably how he dealt with Cao Cao's death, which was a challenging time, as Cao Cao died while encamped in Luoyang, while his court and heir Cao Pi were stationed back north in Ye. Sima Yi, who had been advising Cao Cao in regards to Guan Yu's campaign, was also in Luoyang at the time, and he took control of the situation after Cao Cao's death, as he was the one to get the funeral in order, before escorting Cao Cao's body back to Ye, and facilitating Cao Pi's ascension to become the next king of Wei. And in the interim period before Cao Pi would usurp the Han and name himself as the first emperor of the dynasty of Wei, Sima Yi served as the chief assistant to the prime minister, a role Cao Pi would inherit from his now deceased father Cao Cao. 
Now, this brief few month in between Cao Cao's death and Cao Pi's eventual usurpation was a rather confusing, chaotic, and uncertain time, as you had the mass resignation of the Qingzhou Army Corps as a major internal issue, while externally you had Sun Quan, who is now technically a vassal of Cao Pi, moving massive amount of troops westward towards their newly acquired land in the Jin Province. And this troop movement really unnerved Cao Pi, as he would go on to make one of the worst mistakes in his reign, as he ordered Cao Ren's battered army to retreat from Xiangyang and move back towards the city of Wan in Nanyang. And not wishing to give up the fortifications at Xiangyang and Fan Castle, Cao Pi ordered Cao Ren to burn down the two cities during the retreat. And even though Sima Yi tried to convince Cao Pi, that Sun Quan's troops were most likely amassing to stop a potential retaliatory attack from Liu Bei. Cao Pi was not convinced, as the Jin province stronghold of Xiangyang and Fan went up in flames. Now, once Cao Pi officially usurped the Han and established the Wei dynasty, Sima Yi was promoted to the position of Shang Shu, which is equivalent to the prime minister position, as the Wei dynasty did not have a prime minister role. This, of course, had a lot to do with his personal friendship with Cao Pi and his support of Cao Pi during those years when it seemed like Cao Zhi was going to become the heir. And for the next four years, Sima Yi would bounce between key civil and military posts as he essentially mirrored Cao Pi. If Cao Pi was out at war, then Sima Yi would hold court back in the capital city of Luoyang. And if Cao Pi was back in Luoyang, then Sima Yi would be stationed on the frontiers with Wu, preparing the troops for the next conflict. In 224, while Cao Pi launched another attack on Sun Quan, Sima Yi was entrusted for the first time with his own retinues, numbering 5,000 strong. And even though Sima Yi tried to refuse the appointment, Cao Pi insisted as Sima Yi became his most trusted official. Then in 225, when Cao Pi marched south again against Sun Quan, Sima Yi was ordered to station in Xuchang as the rear guard in charge of supplies, as Cao Pi would compare Sima Yi to Liu Bang's famed advisor Xiao He, who masterfully provided logistics for Liu Bang's armies during the founding of the Han Dynasty. But much like Xiao He, Sima Yi actually did not see any real military action during Cao Pi's reign. Regardless, it was apparent that Sima Yi was one of Cao Pi's most trusted officials, which is why upon his sudden death in May of 226, Cao Pi would name Sima Yi alongside Generals Cao Zhen, Cao Xiu, and Chen Chun as co-regents for the young emperor Cao Rei. Now due to Cao Pi's early and sudden death, Sun Quan would launch an attack on Wei just three months later, with Zhuge Jin and Zhang Ba targeting Xiangyang, and Sun Quan himself targeting Jiangxia. And since Sima Yi was the general most familiar with the Southern Front, given that he had been stationed here for almost three years, he led the charge in repelling Sun Quan at Jiangxia before marching to relieve Xiangyang, where not only was Zhuge Jin's forces pushed back, Sima Yi also managed to kill the Wu general Zhang Ba. And for this achievement, Sima Yi would be promoted to the general of cavalry in December of the same year. And with that, we're going to end our episode here, as Sima Yi is about to embark on his true military career under Cao Rei, as the death of General Cao Zhen and Cao Xiu would push him to become the chief general for the entire Wei forces, and we'll see how he perform against some much tougher opponents. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode, enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!